Hello, I'm François from Shakmat. In this video, I will demonstrate how the mod Medusa works. In a few words, the mod Medusa could be described as an algorithmic LFO. It provides modulation cycles synced to a clock according to rhythmic patterns such as the Euclidean ones. Like we just said, the mod Medusa could be described as a Euclidean LFO. So what's different from a classic Euclidean sequencer? With a Euclidean sequencer, you create rhythmic patterns according to a length and a density of pulses. With our Euclidean LFO, we are not creating pulses, but waveform cycles with the timing adjusted between the pulses a classic Euclidean sequencer would produce. So we have a length knob, density knob, both have also CV input, and those two buttons allow us to set a shift of the sequence. To sync the module, you have a clock input or you can ping the module also with the tap button. Let's now adjust the length of the waveform sequence. Density, when turned fully counterclockwise, mutes the sequence. Thanks to the length plus button, you can set the length from one to eight step to 9 to 16 steps. The shift function allows simply to shift the sequence step by step. By holding those two buttons for 2 seconds, you reset the shift to 0. Let's now create a simple patch with the mod mid user. Let's take a square wave coming from a Clavis Twin Wave. Let's send it in our dual dagger. And we will modulate the low pass filter frequency of the dual dagger with the first channel of the mod mid user. So less density means less and longer waveform cycles, because the waveform lengths adapt to the pattern. At maximum density value, we will have one cycle per clock input. Let's now have a look to the tables. The tables are generated with algorithms, such as the Euclidean one, and create the different rhythmic patterns. Let's now have a look to the first one, which is called as straight as possible. And as you can hear, it gives very military straight waveform sequences. Second one, classic Euclidean. Third one is a revised Euclidean patterns found in the night gallop. It removes some dead spot of the classic Euclidean sequences. Fourth one is the anti-Euclidean sequences. Anti-Euclidean sequences maximize the difference of length of each waveform. Fifth one, it is called accelerando, but you have to keep in mind it's a quantized accelerando. Sequences are more asymmetrical. Next table is decelerando. Seven ones is called divided sequences. It will first divide the sequence, fill the first half, the classic Euclidean pattern, and then fill the second one, still with a classic Euclidean pattern. Last one is fill next, which will create successive short cycles and fill the rest of the sequence with a long cycle. For an example, let's go back to the revised Euclidean. As we said earlier, you can shift the sequence. It of course makes more sense when another sequence or a drum pattern is running along. And 
like reset also, you can reset the shift by pressing those two buttons for 2 seconds. The white LEDs just blink to confirm the shift reset. Let's now have a look to the waveform part. So we have the shape and symmetry controls. Symmetry, as you can expect, allows to go from a falling waveform and when turned fully clockwise to a rising waveform. And now the shape parameter, which can morph the waveform from sigmoid to exponential and then different waveforms, linear, logarithmic and then sinusoidal. By default, the waveforms are bipolar, from minus to plus 5 volt, and when using the unipolar button, the waveforms are now from 0 to plus 5 volts. Let's now talk about the big sync button. By default, the lowest part of the waveforms are synced to a clock. When engaged, it will ensure the the part of the waveforms is synced to the clock and together. It is a very useful feature when playing the mode Medusa along with the beat or when you want to sync the top of the waveforms of the different output together. Let's now mangle a bit the different knobs and see what the mode Medusa can do. Let's now have a few words on the different modes. The modes define the way the different output will behave. There are four different correlated modes, or the output can be set independently. So first, let's have a look to the correlated modes. With those modes, output 2, 3 and 4 will be driven by a correlated sequence the first output is following. So the first output always follow the settings on the panel, so a L long pattern with a D density waveform cycles. The first mode is called main mode. Second output will follow a backward reading of the sequence. The third output will be driven by an inverted sequence, meaning as the first sequence is giving a pulse on a certain step, it will not on the third output, and if the first sequence as an empty step, the sequence driving the third output will have an active step. Fourth output will provide one cycle of waveform on the whole sequence length. The second correlated mode is called the compute mode and leads to polyrhythmic filling between each output. So again, we have to consider the first output is providing a L step long sequence with C cycles according to the density parameter. Second output will provide a L divided by 2, C divided by 2 sequence. Third output has the same principle with a 2 divided by 3 ratio. Fourth output will follow a more complex mathematical association with L minus C long pattern with C divided by 2 waveform cycles. Third correlated mode is called the random mode. Output 2 and 3 will be driven by the same sequence as output 1 and will, with a certain probability, follow the L divided by 2, C divided by 2 correlated sequence with a low probability for output 2 and a high probability for output 3. Output 4 will be driven by a total random sequence. Fourth correlated mode is called phase mode. All the outputs are driven by the same sequence but respectively shifted by L divided by 4, L divided by 2, and 3L on 4, it gives kind of a quadrature Euclidean LFO feeling. Let's now experiment a bit with those correlated modes and create a small patch using the four outputs. We send the first output in the twin wave parameter input. Let's use the mod Medusa second output to the volt octave input of the twin wave. 
So the output will go into the dual dagger low pass filter frequency control and the fourth output into the high pass filter of the dual dagger. Now we go and let's tap the module. Uh, let's swap the table to a Euclidean one. So this was the main mode, let's go to the compute mode. And no random mode. Phase mode. It works pretty well with the fill next tables. And now the independent mode. To access this feature, press for 2 seconds on the mode button. And now a white LED is blinking. We are now editing the first channel. Let's go for a fully symmetrical logarithmic wave. Second output, which is sent into the volt octave input of the VCO. Let's keep an exponential waveform and maybe go to the Euclidean tables. For the third output, so the cutoff filter, let's choose a different table. Fourth one, the high pass filter. Let's go for a very slow cycle. So as you can see, with the independent mode, you can choose for each output different length, density, table, unipolarity and peak syncing. The mode Medusa has additional features which can be edited in a menu. Those features are the assignation of the assignable gate input, the assignations to the VCA and the settings of an onboard clock divider. To access the menu, simply press for 2 seconds on the Length Plus button. The clock divider can be set with this button and LEDs, so the incoming clock can be divided by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. It's a pretty obvious feature, so let's go back to divided by 1. The assignation of the assignable gate input can be edited thanks to this menu, and can be set to 8 different functions. First one is ratchet multiplied by 2. It means each time a certain cycle of a certain output will start with the eye gate received at the gate input, 
the frequency of this cycle will be doubled. Then you have ratchet 3, same thing, but the frequency of the cycle will be tripled. Ratchet 4, random ratchet, accelerate the ratchet, decelerate the ratchet, track and hold, and one shot. About the track and hold, the output will by default hold their value, and when a high gate is received at the assignable gate input, the output will follow the normal LFO behavior. For the one shot function, the cycles will only start if a high gate is received at the assignable gate input at the beginning of the cycles. It is also possible to act manually on the different functions of the assignable gate input thanks to the tap button. To do so, hold the mode button, press on the tap button, and now the tap button is turning red, meaning it is now activating those different functions linked to the assignable gate input functions. Let's do a small patch with those different features. We will use a twin wave again and create a similar patch as before. Let's control the dual dagger frequency cutoff. We have this waveform sequence running. This patch cable is sending a plus 5 volt and we will use it to control the assignable gate input. So ratchet 2. signals and if no I'm giving more positive offset also self patching is still the key to do some great stuff It is possible to store the current state of the module in correlated or independent modes. So all the parameters, tables, modes, peak syncing, unipolarity, and all the different features of the menu, so assignable gate assignation, VCI assignation, and input clock division. To do so, simply press the unipolar button for a couple of seconds, and the table LEDs just blink to confirm the current state storing. At next startup, the module will recall all the different parameters you just stored. Thanks for watching and see you soon. Bye bye.